This episode is brought to you by Quip, modern oral care delivered. For $10 off your first refill, go to tryquip.com slash multiamory. I suppose the way I think about it in my mind is it's kind of like defragging communication a little bit um, and just distributing it across my time or my month in a way that's just a little bit more feasible and manageable and, in my opinion, healthier for my relationships. If you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out-of-the-box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non-monogamy, then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the multi Podcast. On this episode of the Multi Amory Podcast, we're talking about possibly the most important tool that you can bring to a relationship. It is our new and improved monthly relationship check in. Also known as agile scrum no well Not also known as it used to be known as yes the the check-in formerly known as agile scrum your relationships agile scrum. yeah uh, so we ended up here today because gosh we we i think we discovered the agile scrum process and applying it to your relationships what over a year like a almost year a year and a half ago, yeah. I think. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, least, yeah and then at that time like we tested it out for a couple months then we recorded our initial scrum episode about a year ago today actually yeah, episode 97 to about. Mm-hmm. yeah um and in that time we've continued to use it and we've picked it apart and put it back together and improved some bits and added some stuff of our own and taken out some other things. And basically what we're presenting to you today is multi Amory's new and improved version of Agile Scrum. Yes. Which, which we have called Radar. Yes. And we'll get into what the acronym stands for later on. But first, uh, you don't have to go back and listen to the previous episode in order to listen to this one. Um, Because we're going to cover everything that you need to know about using this, why it's amazing, um, and how much we love it. So to start off, first of all, why do a monthly check-in at all, right? A lot of people say, well, why don't you just talk about things when they come up? Or, oh, well, if you just communicate all the time, then you don't need to do that, Or right? There's all sorts of excuses. Or people say, oh, well, that's only something you'd need to do if your relationship was having a lot of problems, right? There's all sorts of excuses that people can give of why they don't want to have a monthly check-in. But what we've found is that doing this and doing it consistently when things are good, when things are harder, regardless of what's going on in your life, is hugely impactful, like hugely mm-hmm. positively impactful in terms of improving the communication that you already have, building intimacy and communication, and just kind of improving all the factors of your relationship, regardless of where they're at when you start doing it. Absolutely. Yeah, I found I find I end up, you know, telling my clients to do some form of scrum or now radar all the time. All the time. I think it's especially helpful for people if if you especially if you've been in a relationship for a long time and you have really set in communication patterns and whether those patterns are good or functioning or neutral or possibly really bad or toxic or unhealthy. Um, I found that establishing a monthly check-in can be a really good way to kind of reset that without mm. having to be like, okay, we just got to restart our communication from the beginning, even though we've been communicating this way for 10 years. Um, right, which is much harder monthly- to actually do than it is to say. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But having a monthly check-in, like having an actually established space for communicating about um, a wide range of topics, which we'll get into, and especially including topics that maybe you have not been able to communicate about before, setting aside that space and time where it's intentional, it's deliberate, it's safe, can really make all the difference in a relationship, whether it's a new relationship or, like I said, whether it's a relationship where you know, you've been together for 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah, and jumping off of the safe thing, um, I found how wonderful it is just to create that really safe space because a lot of times 
any interaction that you have that might be potentially bad could be really emotional and cause a lot of strife or anger or just reactionary behavior. And Scrum slash Radar now, Radar kind of gets rid of that. And again, like you said, creates this safe space where you're just being really intentional in everything that you're doing. So we'll kind of get into more of that shortly. Yeah, I've also found that I know in a lot of relationships of mine in the past, say if there's something that you want to bring up that maybe it's not even a a big problem. It could be. Sometimes it is a big problem, but sometimes there's just something you want to bring up, but you're not sure how it's going to go, or it might be a little bit of a vulnerable conversation or... You're not sure of the timing on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'll find that like when we're doing really well, when we're really happy, it's like, oh, I don't want to bring it up now because I don't want to like ruin the happy times we're having. And then if you're having a bad time or you're in a fight or something, that's obviously a bad time to bring it up because you're not going to be as productive discussing it. And having this monthly space, this monthly time that you're going to spend where you get to talk about those things and very intentionally come, uh, you know, this could be any little thing from a, a new thing that you want to try or that you'd like to have more dates or there's a certain amount of time you'd like to spend with your partner, or it could be something really heavy that could cover the whole range, but that by having a time that you know it can be addressed within the next month, there's a lot less kind of stress day to day of like, when should I bring this up? What is this a good time? Like, when can I get their attention long enough to really sit down and talk about this? Yeah. Um, so let's quickly review, you know, just the basics of why have a monthly check-in at all. Um, And obviously, we're going to tell you about Radar today. Some people do different things like either the Agile Scrum process or they maybe will say they'll call it like, you know, a monthly relationship maintenance meeting or or a state of the union meeting, things like that. Um, So there's a number of like very concrete, tangible benefits that having a regular monthly check in meeting uh, can produce Um, includes things like. First of all, building intimacy and connection with your partner. You know, when you're entering into this space where you're you are intentionally doing something that is for the health of your relationship, that isn't passive. It's not like, oh, I guess us going out on this date together probably helps our relationship. And it probably does, but as in we're both sitting down really intentionally with this mission of we are fortifying and, uh, you know, helping our relationship and our communication right now. And that instantly can build a connection between you and your partner. Um, It minimizes the amount of day-to-day processing that you have to do. Like I I was talking about that daily stress of... Yeah, yeah. That one of the primary complaints, um, particularly that we hear from people who are opening up their relationship for the first time, is like, "Oh God, like we're just talking about everything talking all the time." Talking constantly. We're talking constantly, and yes, talking is great. However, being able to have this kind of specific space set aside for communication means that there's less time that you have to spend day to day whenever something, especially when small things come up, that they don't, you know, especially if it's something that's small. Um, that doesn't need to be brought up right in that moment, you know that there's going to be a time where it's going to be addressed. And because you're minimizing that day-to-day processing, that means that you're also maximizing your day-to-day positive interaction. I found for me where this often manifests is maybe a partner of mine said something to me that kind of hurt my feelings, or maybe there was some kind of misunderstanding, or maybe like something happened in another relationship that I need to tell my partner, but we have a day at Disneyland planned. Um... Then that I can happens know all like, the time to you. <laughs> it's well, maybe not something ex- extreme with that. Maybe something a little bit more realistic. But we're you know we're about to head out to lunch together. Um, you know I can know like you know what there's a time and space set aside for us to talk about this, and so I can just sit here and enjoy lunch with my partner, and we can talk about whatever else we want to talk about, or I can enjoy Disneyland with my partner, and I don't need to worry about bringing up these things. Um, Another thing that it helps is it prevents what we call problem backlog or um, ambushing your partner with a bunch of problems because that's something that we often see in relationships is like if you're not sure about the timing of when to bring something up or you're kind of concerned about a partner's reaction to something and so maybe you bottle up 
your own issues or maybe you decide just not to talk about that and then eventually that grows to a point where you need to talk about it the dreaded and you, we need to talk about something yes and then it then it becomes the we need to talk about text and then it becomes you just like vomiting all over your partner all of these problems that you've been hanging on to for the past two weeks um or months or however long and then your partner maybe who had other plans that day was like whoa shoot now i've totally been ambushed by all mm -hmm. of these problems that we need to process and it definitely helps to prevent that yeah i, I think along those lines too something that can happen is you'll be having some kind of a, a disagreement or a heavy talk about one thing and then it's like 10 other things all come up that actually aren't mm -hmm. related to it but have just been in that problem backlog that we're talking about and so having this regular time every month to just kind of see how everything's going and hopefully avoid those before they even become problems but that even if they are that there's a space so you're not having to just throw those onto a discussion that's actually about something else and also avoiding like super past past discussions i felt like I I don't have to like keep revisiting something that maybe happened six months ago mm. or a year ago even that keeps coming up that might have kept coming up in a regular relationship without this uh, monthly processing just simply because we have like such an intentional space in which to speak about it and kind of hash it out and figure it out without all that emotion behind it. So that's been really great for me. And then the best part is you can still talk about things organically as they come up. You know, we're not trying to tell you, you know, don't talk about anything serious with your partner <laughs> uh, outside of just this once a month meeting. Like, of course, if something comes up and if you feel it's more appropriate to talk about it at that moment, then yeah, talk about it at that moment. Um, I think that what I love about this is just that it helps. I suppose the way I think about it in my mind is it's kind of like defragging communication a little bit um, and just distributing it across my time or my month in a way that's just a little bit more feasible and manageable and in my opinion healthier for my relationships. Yeah something that Dedeker and I actually do pretty often if something does come up that we'll start talking about it sometimes we'll have a little bit of a conversation and if we don't either have a ton of time or we would rather get back to playing fun video games together or doing something mm -hmm. else we can say let's let's add this to a list so we can talk about it in our radar which is coming yeah. up in a week or two weeks or you know whenever the next one is and we'll go oh yeah okay cool like we have an idea so now we can both think about it and prepare to to talk about it then um i do want to make a quick note here that our new uh, name and acronym for this is RADAR, and I am aware that RADAR is already an acronym, but it's kind of a bullshit stupid acronym because it stands for Radio Detection and Ranging, and I'm one of these people who really, I really, I really Thank don't you. like it when you like double up letters to make an acronym work. That always just seems like cheating to me. So ours and is actually RADAR, where too. there's a you know a dot between every single letter. So each one stands for its own thing. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So the other thing that we wanted to say before we actually get into some of the details of doing this is uh, the importance of doing this regularly, even when you don't feel like there's anything that needs to be discussed. Uh, and we suggest monthly. We found that in our relationships, monthly is a really nice combination of it doesn't seem like they're constantly happening, but it's also often enough that you're getting regular check-ins. I wouldn't suggest going longer than a month between them, but I do know some people who will do them more frequently. For example, some people will do them every two weeks. Um, some people even every week. And I think that to use Dedeker's example of someone who's just opening up a formerly closed relationship, that actually might be a really good time to do one mm -hmm. once a week for a little while because there's so much more to talk about and waiting a whole month might seem too long. So anyway, yeah. just to say that, that it is really important and also um, to schedule the next one at the beginning of the current one. So you know that it's on the calendar, you're going to have it instead of saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll plan that later. And then you forget. And now it's been six months and you haven't done it. Uh, and then also to give yourself enough time to be sure that you have a good block of time. We suggest at least an hour and a half, although usually hours end up being closer to three hours. So I'm this is on. Dedeker and I, our longest one so far was six hours. Uh, but that's definitely an exception. Normally, they come in right around three hours. So anyway, plan for that. Um, 
especially if you've been in a relationship for a long time and haven't done this before, your first one or several might be on the longer side too. So just give yourself time because you don't want to rush through it because trying to rush through it can sometimes leave you feeling unsatisfied by the process or could even lead to conflict if it feels like you're rushing through something that is really important to you or to your partner. Yeah. And some things to definitely keep in mind when you're doing your either monthly or your weekly radar um, is just be nice to each other. So (laughs) practice things like compassion and empathy. I know for myself, I've definitely come into certain radars um, and been a little nervous about how it was going to go with my partner. But when I continue to keep in mind like a sense of compassion and a sense of empathy for what they went through that month, it definitely kind of lessens my anxiety and allows me to be there and be an active listener. And also um, to ask for things like the Triforce of Communication, which is our episode 83. Um, That one also is amazing because you can ask for if you just, if someone just wants to open up and use the first Triforce and just kind of connect, or if they want empathy in a situation, which is the second one, or if they really want advice, which is Triforce number three. Mm -hmm. So as for all of those things, be kind and compassionate to your partner during this time because potentially it could get volatile but hopefully um it'll be a session that is very rewarding for the both of you and very helpful in your relationship long term and you know the the space that you're exploring during radar it can hit many different levels it can be everything from oh let's talk about our vacation plans for next month and like let's talk about making a list of things that we want to see in this city to talking about the fight that we had two weeks ago that never got resolved and it still feels very hurtful. Um, So things can get intense when you're talking about it. And if that's the case, of course, it's important to remember, you know, all the things that Emily just said, um, using nonviolent communication techniques can be very helpful. um, And also using halted it was halt, which then became halted um which is if you're hungry angry lonely tired drinking um are there other ones well, that so I'm it's forgetting? the the, the super long drunk, acronym yeah. which is now h h a l t t d is too many too many is letters horny hungry angry <laughs> oh, lonely yeah. tired uh what's the second t tripping <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the last D is drunk. That don't don't yeah, I know, have a drunk, discussion. Drunk, drunk. drunk or drinking. Uh, yeah. Now I'm blanking on what the second T is. T? I have no idea. Well, someone will come up with it. I'm sure. I'm done, um, but that's the same. No, that's horny. <laughs> that's so horny. anyway, as I was saying, if you're feeling any of those things, really horny, really hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or if you're drinking, probably not a good time to be digging into really intense things. And that can come up. Maybe you're in the middle of your scrum and then 30 minutes in, you realize, oh, I haven't eaten in three hours. Definitely. And we need, we need to take a break to eat something and then come back to it. Mid scrum um, food Jay- break is, is key. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, Jace mentioned our six hour scrum. <clears throat> that was not six hours of discussing all the way through. That was probably at least two hours of, of, of us needing to be in separate rooms mm-hmm. and just chilling because we got into some intense stuff. And we were both upset, yeah. emotional, and but we knew that just trying to push through while both of us are angry was not going to have, you know, mean a productive radar meeting. So, you know, we took that time to just kind of be apart and take care of ourselves for a little while and then come back together. Um, and it's totally okay to do that within a radar meeting. I think I would just stress the importance of make sure that you do actually come back and finish it. Um, leaving it half finished is probably not going to be very effective. Yeah. Um, another great suggestion that we got from uh, our listener and friend, Michael Weberman, uh, and that's to attempt to have some kind of a date or a video call in the case of a long distance relationship uh, within a few days before your radar so that it isn't kind of filling this role of a date and it doesn't feel like, oh, to have this meeting means we're taking away from, you know, fun times we were going to have watching a movie or going out somewhere. So be sure that you've gotten those needs met because the point that he made with um, Halt, with the hungry, angry, lonely, tired, that lonely might in this case not mean just lonely in general, but lonely for that specific relationship, 
right? If you've got a few relationships and one of them you don't see as often, you might be really longing for that particular person. So be sure you have some of those needs met before going into this, uh, if possible. Have some kind of a date or a video call or something like that. And that's something Dedeker yeah. and I have found to be really helpful as well, of being sure that we have some other dedicated time to just hanging out and socializing with each other. Uh, so this isn't kind of like our only interaction that week. Mm -hmm. And then finally, before we get into the real meat of this, uh, it's very important to actually write down notes as you do this. We have a really cool template that we've created. If you go to this episode's page on multiamory.com, or if you look at the write-up, which you can find on, on iTunes, if that's where you're listening to this, um, there'll be a link to that document. Uh, that's a really helpful thing to do. And what I recommend is um, actually write it down. Don't just say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just keep it in our heads. Actually write it down. Not like notes on everything, but the discussion topics that you talk about and then any action points you decide at the end. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And try saving this actually all in one document. So you just add a page to it every time. Dedeker and I really like Google Docs as a way to do this because it, even if we're long distance, we can both be editing the same document in real time and seeing each other's changes as we're doing it. Um, if you do it in person, you know, you could actually write it on physical paper. You could have a notebook that you use for this. Um, I personally like having it digital, so then wherever I am, it's easy to get to. You know, we've even done some where we've done the notes just on our phones, pulling up Google Docs on our phones. Um, so anyway, just want to say that, to just be sure that you actually write it down, because then when you come back the next month, the first step that we're going to talk about, spoiler alert, um, is reviewing what's happened in the past month. And part of that's going to be checking in on what did we talk about, how did we do with that. Okay. But before we get into all of that, yes. we'd like to take a little break um, to talk to you about some ways that you can support our show. And the best and biggest and brightest way is going to be uh, to become a Patreon supporter. So we have an amazing community of people on Patreon um, that support us each month. Um, it can be a very small amount. Uh, even at the $1 level, you are contributing to us. Um, our most popular is the $5 Patreon level, which gets you access to our private patron-only Facebook group. Um, and in there, you can talk to a bunch of like-minded individuals and post pictures of your fun date or ask questions if you need some advice about something that's been difficult that's going on in your life. Um, at the $9 and up level, we offer a video discussion group, which has been amazing every single month. All three of us get together with our patrons and talk um, about anything and everything that's going on in their lives. So that has been super valuable for us um, in addition to them. So again, go to patreon.com slash multiamory and become a patron of ours. Another incredibly helpful thing that you can do for us is that you can leave us a review. So you can go to wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. Usually it's probably going to be iTunes or Stitcher. And just take a couple seconds out of your day to leave a review for us. It really does help us to show up higher in search results. It helps other people to know what to expect when they're thinking about whether or not they want to listen to our show. And it helps us to know that we're on the right track and delivering the kind of content that y'all want to hear. So go to iTunes, Stitcher, um, and leave us a review. And then finally, our sponsor for this episode is Quip. Quip is a company that makes, uh, well, I mean, mostly toothbrushes. They do other things like making <laughs> toothpaste and stuff like that. But the real exciting thing is their electric toothbrushes, which are super portable and the heads are exchangeable and inexpensive and you can get a subscription. So every three months, they'll send you a new head for your toothbrush along with a new battery for the base. Um, and if you use our promo code or our promo URL, which is to go to triquip.com slash multiamory, you'll get $10 off your first refill, which equals a free refill. So that it, three months later, that first refill will be free. Um, as for a good quality electric toothbrush, these are incredibly affordable in the like $25 to $35 range, as opposed to the $100 or more that you're going to pay for a lot of the other ones out there. Uh, and it's really nice. Emily and I both love ours. It's also really easily portable compared to some of the other huge base ones out there. Dedeker even was just saying earlier today that she thinks she's finally been won over by how much Emily and I love ours, that she's actually oh, going to get equipped. Oh, we're getting her one. 
we're getting our wine. So if you, the listener at home, also feel like, you know what, they've been talking about these things for a year, maybe I'll try it too. You can do that at triquip.com slash multiamory. And now let's get into this. Okay, this is so exciting. So we're actually going to take you through the steps of radar. So um, quick review of what radar even stands for. It stands for review, agree the agenda, discuss, action points, and reconnect. So we're going to start out with step number one, which is review. So you sit down with your partner and you start out by reviewing the past month. So you just update each other on what's going on in your life, what's going on in your relationships. Um, When I sit down to do this with my partners, usually the first thing I do is I pull up my Google calendar and I just look at what did I do in this last month? And it can be anything. It could be things that you did together, like, oh, we we went out and had that really nice dinner. That was fun. Um, Oh, we we had that argument about chores. Oh, maybe we should make a note about that. Like, oh, we stayed up all night watching the new season of Stranger Things. Right, (laughs) right. um, or things that you did on by yourself, you know, it could be like, oh, I started this new job. Oh, I, I went on a couple first dates. Oh, I, uh, gosh, I don't know. I got full marks in my company netball league. That, that sentence probably didn't even what? make any sense. But wow. um, <laughs> I'd love to hear the <laughs> mythology around that sport and that oh, scoring goodness. system. <laughs> um, but as you review, I'd recommend writing down just a couple little notes, especially on things that you think might need some discussion. So, for instance, maybe you want to discuss those first dates that you went on, or maybe you're thinking, hmm, maybe we need to revisit that chores argument that we got into. So as the two of you go back and forth sharing what happened in the past month, you know, kind of take some notes, just keeping in mind things that, might, that you might want to revisit. Yeah. And then also, you're going to look back at your action points from the previous month's radar meeting. Now, if this is your first one, obviously you won't have those yet, uh, but you will at the next one. And so that's of your action points. Look at them and say, which ones did we accomplish and celebrate the ones that you did? And for the ones that you didn't do or feel like still need work or something like that, also take notes and put those back into the discussion list so that you can look at them and then you can, um, this is a fun little, uh, you know, business productivity hack here is to look at the four D's and this, that's to either do defer, discuss or delete. And if you look up the four D's, you should be able to find that, but it's basically, do we just say, Hey, we actually need to do it this time. Do we say defer and go, you know what, maybe another time later in the future would be better. So let's kind of table this for now. Do we discuss it? Do we need to rethink how we're going to go about this or, you know, rethink what that goal is? Or do we delete it or drop it is the other term for that is to just say, you know what, maybe this isn't something we actually care that much about. So you're going to take these notes that you had from the first part that Dedeker mentioned and also from your action points from last time. And then you're going to add those to your list to discuss which we have in step two. Which is agree the lineup list or agenda. Um, Agree the agenda is what came out of the original scrum. So we kind of didn't come up with anything better than that. It was (laughs) a good it was good as it was. So we kept it agree the agenda. Um, And there are two parts to the agenda. Uh, One is that you will set topics that you will discuss every single time, plus any topics that came up during your review session. Um, And in addition, We've made this long list of set topics, which those ones can be customized, but amazingly, like, I did my very first radar a couple weeks ago, and everything that uh, is on this list I used, because it was, I feel like every single one of them in some capacity or another could be used, even if you're in a monogamous relationship, maybe not one of them if you're in a monogamous relationship, but... (laughs) But they're just kind of all-encompassing, and they're great. So I highly recommend using this list, which is very different than what we used to do in Scrum. Um, But it's crazy helpful. Yeah, so this is, you know, one of the biggest differences that we made from the original Scrum process, which is that we came up with this list of set topics, because I think we found as we were doing it is that, like, sure, it's great that, you know, you talk about things that come up that maybe are problems, but there's so many things that need to be talked about in Mm -hmm. a relationship, even if there's not a problem, Mm -hmm. even if you want things to develop just in a good, healthy manner. Like for instance, talking about your sex life, 
Like maybe you're both happy with your sex life. Maybe there's no problems with your sex life, but this gives you an opportunity to talk about, is there anything new that we want to try? And that way talking about, I think I love that because that way talking about trying new things in the bedroom is not in response to something being wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not in Great response point. of like, uh, I don't, I don't feel like having sex anymore or my, I'm not satisfied with the sex. So let's try something new. It's no, we feel good. How can we enhance this and make it feel even better? Um, so here's our set list of topics. I'm going to go through briefly. You can look on our template um, to see this list of topics. Of course, it can always be customized, but we do recommend that you go through all of these topics and check in um, in all of your relationships. So the first one we have is quality time. A again, this is another one of like, it's good to talk about this even if there's no problems of thinking about, is there a new restaurant we want to try? Is there a new hobby we want to get into? Is there a new video game we want to start? That's not in reaction to, oh, we're so, so bored with each other and we haven't been spending time together. Um, of course, sex, like we talked about, um, talking about each other's health, about what's going on, you know, if there's any kind of I mean, when Jason and I do this, it makes a range. Usually it's just complaining about different sore body parts. <laughs> um, uh, but that could also extend to sexual health or things that you're seeing on the horizon or things like that. It could um, also, just in a discussion that I went to the other day, um, talking about new drugs that you're trying, especially you know, mm -hmm. if you're in the earlier mm -hmm. stages of treating depression or something, you might be going through different drugs each month or each couple months to figure out which ones are right for you. Having a, an opportunity to discuss that during this health section can be really useful, um, especially since you're taking notes. So you could actually use that to look back and go, well, how was this? How did I feel while doing all these different things for my health? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next one on the list is talking about other partners or other relationships. And this one feels very important to me because I love having this kind of set determined space for talking about other relationships um, because I cannot tell you how many times I've had clients or friends or listeners of the podcast reach out to me or to us asking well I just said I love you to a new partner and I'm really excited about it but like I don't know how to tell my husband like when do I tell him that do I just like text him that do I tell him when he gets home from work if he's having a bad day then I don't know how he's gonna you know it, it kind of helps to take the questioning out of when do I give my partner updates about my other partners. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of give a state of the union. Again, even if nothing bad is happening, it could be something like, oh my goodness, like he and I just said, I love you to each other and that's really exciting. Or or it could be, uh, you know, I haven't gone on any dates in a while, but I just started talking to someone on OkCupid. We've been talking for a couple of weeks and we might set a date next month, something like that. It's just this good kind of neutral, safe space to talk about what's going on. Um, ideally, you know, um, Again, like I keep coming back to this, not when the context is that there's a problem that needs to be solved necessarily. I think this is also a good time to emphasize that doing radar is not only something for, you know, primary type relationships or ones that you live with. This can also be with mm -hmm. newer partners or partners that you don't see as often uh, or even more casual partners. And this opportunity to talk about all your other relationships is also really useful because I found that if there's a partner that I'm living with at the time, they're usually going to get most of the updates on everyone else as they're going. But often the other partners who I might not be seeing as often right then based on where I am, I might just not even think to mention something to them about something that's developed in my other relationships or that a relationship I had has ended or has started. So having this opportunity to just go, oh yeah, let me update you on everything to just make sure I didn't miss anything this month. And even if you're in a monogamous or monogamish kind of relationship, this like other partners could act as, well, are you interested in ever, you know, Joe and Jane are talking about maybe... <laughs> having sex with us at some point or is that like a thing that we could potentially do i know my partner and i aren't um seeing other people right now but we use this slot as just a kind of a placeholder to develop what we're thinking um about that and just if we want to continue the non-monogamous conversation and what makes us happy there so it still i think is a really important section um even if you are in more of a monogamous mindset and you can also use it as like, what's happening with your friends? There's not a friends one on here, but this mm. other partner's one could be like, hey, so-and-so, I had a tough time with them this month, or 
we're gonna go on a trip together a girl's trip or whatever yeah maybe like other significant people might be a way to there you go to relabel yeah, this. yeah that's a good that's a good one that's yeah. a good one yeah yeah so moving along down the list there's um fights slash arguments this can be good of if there's something standing between the two of you, as in maybe things started to get a little bit heated a couple days ago, and then you decided, you know what, let's wait for a couple days and just talk about this in our scrum, you know, maybe talking about ongoing conflicts or disagreements that need to be resolved. I found that this section is also very good for thinking back and thinking about maybe arguments that we had that did resolve and just kind of double checking of like, do we still feel good about that? Do we still feel mm. good about how that ended? Or... You know, and this is a great place to discover. Sometimes you could discover like, oh, I thought that was totally resolved, but you're still really upset about that. Mm -hmm, so yeah. let's talk about that again or vice versa. Um, yeah. Moving on, we included a section about money. Um, I know Americans as a whole, we are very uncomfortable talking about money. Um, and, you know, currently in my relationships, I do not share finances with anybody, but I still find this very important just to talk about. Again, you don't have to print out a freaking financial report and hand it to your partner of what's going on in your in your life but it can be useful to discuss money to the level of which you're comfortable about just so that your partner's in the know you know because it, again it can be a thing where it's like oh this month is really tight and so i don't really have a lot of money to go out to eat all the time but my partner's always inviting me out to eat and i feel bad i don't want to say no you know that this can be a good opportunity to at least let your partner in on that of like hey things are a little tight right now so that they have that awareness yeah, this was another thing that came up in the discussion that I went to the other day up here in Seattle, which was about um, sort of discrepancies between amounts of money between partners, and that sometimes that mm -hmm. can be a point of tension or stress if you have a partner who makes a lot more money than you do, and the things that they want to go do are more expensive. And so you feel like you either have to say no to them, or you're stretching yourself too thin financially that having this place that's not in the midst of, no, I can't do that thing, or, oh, I want to, but could you pay for more of it than me? Or, you know what I mean? Like all that negotiating can happen in this safe space where it's like, hey, let's talk about, this is kind of where I'm at financially and what things I'm okay to spend money on this month. And then also by checking in every month, it's not just like, hey, you're you know the rich one in this relationship and I'm the poor one. It's like, no, this is an ongoing discussion because money is always gonna be changing through our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah great. definitely um so continuing to move on we included um a section on work slash projects so again you know if you have a regular you know nine to five job talking about developments there or if you're gunning for a promotion or if you're really unhappy at work and you you know you want to do something different or if you live a more freelancer lifestyle <laughs> um like i know that jason and i do which kind of goes more project to project talking about those things um Moving on, we included a section on travel. Um, I know from my relationship, since I travel a lot, that section becomes more relevant. For other people, it may not be as relevant. Th relevant. It may be more about vacations that you're planning, or maybe there's family obligations that you're going to travel for. And that's the section for you to discuss that and to talk about logistics regarding that. Um, moving along down the list, there's family. And that can include things like kids, if you and your partner have kids together, um, or if you're just dealing with relatives or talking about your parents, um, it can be good to just check in about what's going on in your individual family lives. Um, also closely related to this is the next one, which is household. Now, this is very important for people who are sharing a household, for people who are cohabiting. This is where you can talk about things like chores or, you know, if you own your house, for instance, like you know, are we renovating something or are we going to look for a new place to stay or are we happy with cohabiting? <laughs> um, what are the things that we could be doing to make our cohabiting experience feel better? Things like that. And then last but not least is the miscellaneous catch all category where if during your review section, things came up that don't fall into this, you know, into these categories, then here's the catch all for to make sure that things that are important to you still get discussed. Um, so that's our full long list. Uh, you're not expected to remember it from memory. I certainly it'll don't. Be in the, it'll be in the <laughs> um, template document. It'll be in yeah. the template. It'll be in the template. So, you know, we're at this stage number two, which is where we're agreeing the lineup. And so we have our list and then we also agree, is there anything outside of this list that needs to be discussed that we can throw into this miscellaneous category? And we agree together, what are the things that we want to tackle for this particular meeting? 
Well, and, and then you move on to the next step. Well, I did want to say, though, one thing is that uh, I do think it's important to look at the order of it quickly before you go on mm. to the discussion to just say, is there anything that we maybe want to discuss first or anything we want to save till last? To get it over with. <laughs> yeah, either if it's get it over with or sometimes you could structure it as like, let's talk about some more serious things that take more of our energy first. <laughs> Uh, or it could be, hey, let's talk about some easy, quick things first, then get into some heavy things, and then talk about some fun things at the end. Uh, you know, whatever it is. But just take a look at that and see if you want to move things around at all in the order. And then we discuss. This is the middle of the radar. This is the D to discuss. So you're going to go down this list and talk about each of the topics, even if you don't think there's anything to talk about that there are some times where we'll be going down the list and it's just, um, you know, family. It's like, how's, how's your family? Oh, they're fine. Pretty much the same as before. Uh, <laughs> talked to my brother the other day. Okay, cool. How's your family? Uh, yeah, they're fine. Uh, you know, going to see him in a couple months, right? It doesn't have to be anything, but it's good to just check in because it gets your brain thinking like, oh, is there anything relevant? Or, oh, hey, you know, actually uh, that made me realize that, you know, my sister's birthday is coming up. I should figure out what I need to do for that. Whatever it is, talk about every topic on the list, even if there's nothing to talk about, even if it's just everything's great, right? Great. Hey, remember how awesome that was? Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> and then as like, Emily yeah, was. was saying, oh, sorry, what were you going to say, Em? I just said, fuck yeah, was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then as Emily was saying at the beginning, that this is a really important time to remind yourself of coming to everything with compassion and empathy, that this is a space where you can talk about some of those harder things that... I know in my radar meetings that I've had with various partners during one meeting, there might be moments where, you know, we're dealing with stuff that makes us angry or we might be crying out of sadness at one point or frustration. And then another point might be crying because we're so happy and we're laughing so hard. And another point just feeling really affectionate and in love with each other. And another time being very logical and pragmatic about stuff that you can cover this whole range. So just coming in with this, compassion and empathy and understand that you might go through a lot of different things, but you're in this together. Um, also using the Triforce, like Emily was saying, actively communicating whether you are looking for problem solving and feedback, or you just want to share something, or you just want some understanding or appreciation. Be active in your listening. Stay attentive. Don't be on your phones while you're doing this discussion phase. Um, really be there engaged with each other and just take notes when you need to. Using nonviolent communication, um, which I'd recommend going back and listening to our uh, Five Ways to Suck Less at Communication episode to learn a little more about that. And then, of course, remembering to halt or to halt uh, if you're realizing that you're not being as effective at communicating because you're hungry or you're angry or lonely or tired or horny or drunk or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. And then the number four... Uh, section of radar is action points. So this is just essentially creating very achievable goals that are as specific as possible um, for that next month. Uh, so not every single topic that you're going to talk about on your list will have action points, but when you create some, and usually I have like three or four from my radars. I don't know what the two of you have. Yeah, some more, some less, but that sounds about right, actually. Yeah, it kind of depends yeah. month to month, yeah. We yeah, try not to overwhelm ourselves with, like, a to-do list. No, exactly. Yeah. And there are things that you can sort of come back to during the month, especially if you write them down, which you should, um, then you can sort of reference it throughout the month. Um, and it, it just ensures that we're actually, like, taking steps forward in this relationship. Um, and it provides this very easy way to check in and say, okay, I'm in that moment right now, that pattern that I keep on doing, what was the actionable thing that I was supposed to work on during a moment like this? I'm going to go back and reference that and try to actually do it. Um, and then it also allows you to review on your next radar, did I do that thing? How well did I do that thing this month? Um, and then kind of bounce back and forth between the two of you on what was actually done in the previous month. And it's fun. Like, I have... My first radar, well, it was Scrum back then, but was in <laughs> December of last year. So I'm about to okay, come up to on year. December. Nice. Exactly. One entire year. So it's very cool to kind of look back at all of the different action points 
that I had throughout the year and sort of to see how far we've come in this relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's my favorite thing about the action point step is is that is that it is ensuring that we're actually taking action on the things that we're discussing because so many times I'm, I've both experienced this in my own relationships and I've heard this from clients. It's like, well, my partner and I talk, had this long, heavy talk about this thing and I know that he heard what my feelings are, but then nothing happened or like nothing changed. Yeah. Or we talked about, oh yeah, maybe someday we should go to a swingers resort. That'd be fun. And then we never, ever made any plans about it. Um, and so actually, you know, once you get through your discussion phase and you've decided on like, what are some actual action points that we're going to take? You have something concrete to work toward. Mm -hmm. So some examples of how this may come up, maybe when you're in the sex segment of your discussion, you may be like, oh yeah, we watched this porn together that had that Shibari scene and we both thought that was really hot. Like, I mean, you thought that was really hot, right? Yeah, I know. We both thought that was really hot. So maybe let's make an action point of like, we should actually go to the sex shop and get some rope mm -hmm. and see if we want to try that for ourselves. I'd actually recommend um, ordering it online. You can generally get better quality stuff. Um, <laughs> that's actually like the right type of hemp rope. But anyway, that's a, mm -hmm. a different. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. That's thank neither you that here tip. nor there. <laughs> you could go to Adam and Eve and use our promo code multi and probably get a good discount. That's true. That, that's actually not a great place Shibari for Shibari rope. stuff. But I'm trying. I know. To I know you're trying. But like I just an advertisement here. Okay, but, but I got to be real with with our with our listeners <laughs> here for, <laughs> okay, for Shibari okay, rope. Don't go to Adam and Eve. I'm sorry. But for all your other stuff, if you want to try pegging, for example, Adam and Eve's a great, great place supplies. to get some cheap supplies yes. for that. Yes. yes. Okay, fine. I'll change my example. So maybe you're like, oh, we talked about maybe incorporating some pegging into the bedroom. Let's actually make an action point to go to adamandeve.com. Use, use promo, promo code, code M-U-L-T-I. And, <laughs> and get oh a strap on. Can I please move on to the next example? Yes. Good Lord. Yes. Okay. Another example, um, maybe in the household section when you realized, you know, we, we had this argument early this month about the division of household chores. So maybe our action point is let's try, let's just try this next month. And just one person will be responsible for washing the dishes and doing the laundry. And the other person will be responsible for ironing and vacuuming the floors. Let's try that for the month and see how it goes. Because that's the other great thing about the action points thing is that it has this built-in trial period. Because you're going to revisit it at your next radar meeting next month. And so you get an opportunity to be like oh, that worked really well. Let's keep doing that. Or, you know what? That didn't work out so well. Let's revisit it in this radar and see what's something that we could do better this month. Mm -hmm. So that I think it helps prevent anyone feeling like they're stuck um, for, for too long trying something new, um, which I really like. And the other thing is that the action point section, they can be used for your personal goals as well. You know, so it could be when you're talking or when you're talking to your partner about how things are going at work, you mentioned how you feel like it's time to ask for a raise, but you're nervous about it, but you want to do it within this next month. And so you kind of ask your partner to be your accountability buddy a little bit to a certain extent of like kind of setting that goal of like, you know what, before we have our next radar meeting, I would love to ask for that raise. And then again, you have the opportunity next month to check in. Did it happen? Did it not happen? If it didn't happen, why? What could we do to actually make sure it happens this month? And so on and so forth. Yeah, I think that I do want to emphasize how important this action points phase is to really give some time because often we'll have a discussion about something and we'll kind of reach some conclusions about it. But then when we get to the action points phase being like, okay, but what can we actually do to, to make sure that we actually, you know, change something about this uh, and that feel free to be creative here too. Like if I can give an example from our own lives a while back, there was something that I would do when I get excited about some new project or a new thing I want to do that the way I would talk about it is like, Oh, I can't wait to do this, but Oh no, but what if, but what if this happens or like, Oh, but Oh man, I'll have to figure out, you know, what, what uh, size that's going to be or how often I could do this or get this new program to do it. And that Dedeker would interpret that as stress. She's, she would be like, Oh gosh, like Jace is stressing out about this thing and, and feel like she needed to, to fix it or try to help that. Whereas for me, that was just sort of my way of being excited. And so we're like, okay, how can we make this into an action point? And so we came up with this thing of if that's happening and she recognizes, Oh, is this that she would ask like, Oh, are you being a puppy? like a puppy who's just like getting excited. Or if I realize I'm doing that, my code word was just to say like, woof, woof. Like I'm just really excited and like working myself up over this thing. And it's not actually because I'm stressed. This is my way of like getting excited about it. So, right. So it could be some silly thing. And that's something we'll still mention from time to time. Um, but just having an actual concrete 
thing that you can do and that you can kind of check in with each other on throughout the month uh, is super helpful for actually sticking to some of these changes. Yeah. Oh, can we bring it home to our last step? Yeah. <sighs> yes, finally, here we are at the last R, which is reconnect. Um, so something that we stole yet again from Scrum is uh, the appreciation round. Well, I guess this is just from the relationship Agile Scrum. Yeah, so in, in Scrum for Business, this is just like end on a good note is usually yeah. how it's said. And then in that article on using Scrum in relationships, it was an appreciation round. And we've now expanded that into reconnect. Yes, but appreciation round, we definitely still recommend that you do every single time, which is sharing and taking turns, sharing and listening with your partner, something that you appreciate about them, which is really, really nice and very lovely, often the part in which we cry yeah. <laughs> and have our our hearts just full of love for one another. Um and in addition to that, you can just give each other compliments. Your ass looks amazingly sexy today. <laughs> um, or do a fun activity afterwards or do some massage or cuddling that might lead into some sexy times. Um, I know after the last scrum that I did uh, with my partner, we went out to a nice dinner and it was awesome. And we felt super connected afterwards. And then that just kind of led organically <laughs> into this lovely dinner. So. Yeah. I highly recommend that. Yeah, I think the reconnect step is another reason why I think it's so important to make sure that you get through all of the steps of radar. Um, because you, as we said, you may be covering some very volatile territory or some very intense territory, and you may go on an emotional roller coaster with your partner, like Jay said, of like going from super logical and discussing logistics to being really happy and playing with each other to being really sad or being really angry and frustrated with each other. And it can be an exhausting ride, mm -hmm. but knowing that at the end of it, you're going to have this reconnect, knowing that even if we go through some very uncomfortable discussions, whether it's uncomfortable because we're revisiting an argument or uncomfortable just because I'm uncomfortable talking about money or whatever it is, that knowing that on the other side of it is this chance to reconnect with your partner and the chance to make each other feel good at the end can really help motivate you, really help drive you and really help it help you to walk away from an uncomfortable discussion feeling really good, which is not something that we often get in our day to day lives. Yeah. Right. It's not often something that, you know, you go to couples counseling or therapy. It's not often that you walk away from that just being like, man, we feel so connected now. Sometimes it's like, gosh, we have so much to work through now. Right. It can. Oh, well, I make I make I make my couples do an appreciation. Round well, that's oh, good. Great. Working with good. me. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure yeah. some other counselors or coaches or therapists do. But that is something I love about this. And I also think it's important to really, um, you know, be creative in your appreciation round too. of really think about what it is that you appreciate that's maybe not just saying the same things every month too, or the same thing you say to them every day. And it yeah. could be something related to the discussion itself. Like I really appreciate how honest you were able to be with me about this thing that I know is hard to talk about. Or it could be something more general of like, you know, I was just thinking recently about how much, you know, I admire what a hard worker you are and that you, you know, you're always working so hard at your job. Like that's something I really admire, whatever it is to really like spend some time thinking about, um, you know, what, what, what are some real things that you appreciate about this person that you might not say every day? Yeah. Um, so before we recap our steps at the end here, I did want to point out that uh, radar is a palindrome, which means it spelled the same forwards and backwards. Uh, like Hannah. And what I what I realized, like Hannah, yes. Uh, <laughs> what that's I was random. what I was realizing about this that's kind of cool is that actually the steps sort of work that way too. It's almost like it works its way, you know, down into some deep stuff and then comes back up. And so if you think about the first step being reviewing and the last step being reconnecting, that kind of both of those are about your relationship as it is right now and, you know, looking at, hey, what have we been doing? And also like reconnecting so we can move into the future. That's like the bridge to your existing relationship. And then agreeing the list and setting action points are both steps about kind of making a list and like organizing stuff that you're discussing. And then this middle step, which is the meat of it, where you'll spend most of your time is this actual discussion. So I think it's kind of cool that it, that it sort of makes this symmetrical shape going into the discussion and then coming back out of it. 
So not quite like a sandwich. I thought that's what you were going for. It's. I mean, it, you could think of it sort of like a sandwich, I guess. Sandwich. It's like a like an open faced sub. Kind of. Yeah. Hmm. I guess. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So again, just to recap, you start with your review. You move on to agree the agenda. You discuss. You decide on your action points, and then you reconnect. And again, if you guys check, um, if you all check the show notes, then you will see that we'll include a link to a template that we have created for for all y'all. Yeah, that you can I keep... copy into Google Docs or or print mm-hmm. out or use it however you want to use it. Yeah, I keep having this idea of like maybe Jace, you and I could record one of our radar meetings one time Whoa. and release it as a bonus episode. I know that sounds really intense. Sounds maybe so we would intense. edit some of it out. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe we'd edit some of it out, but just so people get a taste of. That's an the, interesting idea. You know, idea. how these things go. Yeah, I, I don't know if people would be into that or if that'd be way too much of an intrusion into our personal <laughs> lives. <laughs> let let us know if you'd be into that. Maybe that's something we could release just for the patrons in the private Facebook yeah. group. Yeah. You know, because so you some, sometimes, especially, your private life. you know, like when we do workshops on this, sometimes I get frustrated wanting to be like, I want to just show you. Yeah. Like, I just want to yeah. demonstrate for you yeah. how this goes instead of having to lay it out, but... But it's yeah, very we'll personal. See. I'm sure that mm-hmm. it looks potentially slightly different for each person who does of course. it. Yeah, yeah. Of course. for sure. Yeah, so yeah. yours may look very different than mine, and I think mine is awesome. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure all of yours out there are awesome as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, great. Well, if you would like to have your question or comment played on the show, you can call 678-M-U-L-T-I. Zero five. Um, you can leave us a voicemail there, or you can send us an audio message at the Multiamory Facebook page. You can also email us at info at multiamory.com, or you can send us a message on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. To support our show and join our private Facebook community, go to patreon.com slash multiamory. Multiamory is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Emily Matlack, and me, Dedeker Winston. Our episodes are edited by Mauricio. Our social media wizard is Will McMillan. Our theme song is Forms I Know I Did by Josh and Anand from the Fractal Cave EP. The full transcript is available on this episode's page on multiamory.com. Hey, this is Andrew Gerza, disability awareness consultant, crippled content creator, and host of Disability After Dark, the podcast to shine a bright light on sex and disability. And you're listening to a Swing Set podcast at swingset.fm.